folks, this is part 2 and the final reveal of this project. We left it here. As you can see, I reused the plastic bottle to create the main projectile. It was relatively easy to find the right size cylinder among my household stuff. I took the picture as a model and raised the bottle uh, with a styrofoam base. It was later covered with uh, white clay, of course, and I also started building from the inside the top part. I let it dry between layers and kept modeling the picture shape and I branded the, the base with a pencil sharpener pattern and while I let it dry I found two old pens and converted them into a couple of dots. As you can see I kept on adding white clay layers. The process was slow but necessary. If I had done it in one go shrinkage would have uh, ruined proportions. Surfaces were filed and I kept on working with the base. The small dots need an extra filing attention too. There you have it. Looking cool. I prepared the terrain for those dots adding a bit of white clay. And of course I purposely damaged the, the fuse as a result of a failed impact. Later on the dots were covered with Mr. Surfacer and I texturized surfaces a little bit, otherwise everything would have been too flat. I let them dry on airbrushed rust primer and let them dry again for 24 hours. Time to add gold and iron on those fuses and rebel iron on the, on the lower threads. Then I wrapped iron pigments with my fingers all over the surfaces, including fuses and threads. Finally, the whole thing was pin dry brushed, if the, the word exists, on protruding irregularities. I think it, it looks convincing. The next step with these dots will be the lettering. But now we will go on with the figure. Um, pre shadowing was given with a primer base. If you find white clay, you obtain a peachy hairy skin, and as an after result, I tried to get rid of it before and after priming. While I let the, the, the figure dry for one day, I airbrushed base with these brownish tones. Then I airbrushed the figure with uh, its uniform color base. Here, I followed Vallejo's face set instructions to the letter. This is a beige base. Red stripes and buttons were painted on the uniform. Shadowed areas were highlighted with a uh, black red. Peach skin. I found this old brush a definitive solution. Surfaces were now spotless. I painted those boots with a um, black base. Then I dry brushed them with chocolate. Finally, colors were unified with the smoke wash. Shadows and lights were added on the face and finally tones were unified. Lights and shadows were brushed as well on the uniform with a last unification wash. I used the lighter filter all over the surfaces and then used the darker filter as a pin wash only on the figure's face and hands. I went on with a dark pin wash with the uniform. Looking good. Finally, I added gloss the brass buttons and wet effects on the figure's eyes and inside its uh, lower lip. Time to undertake the lettering. If you want me to be sincere, uh, that's the thing that attracted my attention when I saw the picture for the first time. I used a white pencil to, to write subtle words. Then letters were painted with a thin brush and white acrylics. Letters were weathered with uh, pin rust elements on final iron pigment corrections. Terrain. I laid a white blue base and on top of it I added bigger pebbles and stones. Then I smoothed everything adding a thinner grain layer. I wrote the title in German with Hamilcar Varka's help. Thank you Michael. I used a filter and added shadows on those letters using a careful pin dark wash to get a dimensional effect, otherwise everything would have looked uh, too flat. And finally, 
some baggy elements were needed too. And that's it. Here you have it. I hope you like how it turned out. It was a bit risky from the beginning because the result was, was a bit uncertain. In fact, this is my first scratch build uh, full figure and I'm a bit surprised because it coincides more or less with what I saw in my head. Um, I guess I feel like doing more of this stuff. I had loads of fun with the dots because their build and painting phase was relatively quick. The figure mm, needed a lot of work at many levels. Uh, the dots are fine, but the figure has some defects that the use of white clay material carries with it. It's a, di it's a bit difficult to work with. Uh, you need to, to respect drying times, be aware of the shrinkage factor, and above all, pitch skin. Uh, that was nightmarish. Surfaces are not 100% smooth, as in plastic figures. The material doesn't allow that uh, with this size. However, I'm, I'm happy with it. I think the overall effect is cool. And as I told you, I want to do more, more of this stuff. I guess there are no, no creative limits, limits however. Mm, time disposal and space are, are quite determined. What do you think? Would the audience be interested if, it, if, if I do more of this stuff? Uh, do you have any ideas or suggestions? Thank you in advance for your feedback. It's, it's, it's really appreciated. I mean, I've been working for so long with it that, that you lose perspective and I don't know if uh, I like it because it's cool or because it's just my white clay son. Okay guys, uh, I leave you here with a final reveal and I hope to, to see you soon. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.